Welcome to Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy. Pretty obvious spoilers for Falcon and the Winter Soldier are ahead. So it turns out that Sharon Carter was the power broker all along. What? The show didn't do a very good job disguising this. We all knew she was on the wrong side of the law and that she was bitter. You cost me everything. And the show didn't even set up anyone else to be an alternative power broker. That's a bummer since Arnim Zola in a robot body was right there. But here's the thing, Sharon being the power broker isn't the real twist. I think she's actually been the power broker all along. What? That's right. Sharon Carter, this Sharon Carter, this one has always been a bad guy. And I got proof. For one thing, prominent YouTubers like myself and Eric Voss have pointed out that it would be absurd for Sharon Carter to be the power broker. We see here that she's been snapped. So there's no possible way she could build a criminal network that owns Madripoor in the six months since the blip. But wait. If Sharon was already evil, wouldn't she have taken advantage of the chaos following the snap to fake her own death? After all, she was already on the run, and that would get the law off her tail. But still, taking control of the Madriporian underworld in five years starting from nothing, that seems impossible because it is. The unlikelihood of this twist could prove that Sharon Carter has actually been the power broker for many, many years. Let's go back to her childhood. She had a photograph in her office, Aunt Peggy standing next to JFK. But it was a lot to live up to. Now we don't hear much about Sharon's father. She would be either Peggy's brother or nephew. Now I wonder if maybe he always compared Sharon to his sister, or if Sharon thought that the Carter legacy was too much to live up to. And just because she's related to Peggy Carter doesn't mean that she's good like Peggy Carter, you know? It's very possible that when she was in school, she was approached by Hydra. We see this in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. John Garrett turned Grant Ward at a very young age. I work for a secret organization that's always looking to recruit young men like you. Basically, Hydra looks for potential operatives who they can warp from a young age, like when they're recruits or teenagers. Young Sharon could have been feeding Hydra information for years before she even joined S.H.I.E.L.D. For instance, Sharon Carter was assigned to monitor Steve Rogers. She would have known every time someone entered his apartment. So she knew that Fury was there and alerted the Winter Soldier. She enters because it's her assignment to kill Fury if the Winter Soldier fails. And as far as she knows, he didn't. But then, later on in Winter Soldier, she sides with Captain America against Hydra. Captain's orders. Why? Because she's a smart woman. She could have read the situation and known there was at least a 50-50 chance Captain America would take Hydra down. Her joining the fight wouldn't have made much of a difference either way. And she decides that if the world was run by Hydra, then she's still just a pawn of Hydra. She decides, I'm going to set up my own little thing in Madripoor. And there's precedence for all of this in the comics. She actually assassinated Steve Rogers while she was mind controlled, but it counts. There's a terrific YouTube channel called Nando vs. Movies. He does great theory breakdowns and movie rewrites. You should really check him out. And a few years ago, he posted a theory that I love. Sharon Carter was helping Zemo in Civil War. See, lots of events in Civil War had to break just right for Zemo's plan to succeed. It's a CinemaSense Honest Trailer pitch meeting waiting to happen. The Sokovia Accords had to be happening right when Zemo decodes Hydra's secrets and gets the Winter Soldier code words. Steve and Tony have to choose opposite sides and split the Avengers. And then Steve has to track down Bucky. He has to find Bucky when he escapes. Then he has to get his gear back after he's arrested so he can go fight Tony and get to Siberia. It's a lot of things that had to break just right in Zemo's favor that he apparently has no control over. And as Nando points out, all of this makes a lot more sense if Sharon Carter is a secret villain. Steve is thinking about signing the Accords, and then Sharon nudges him toward not signing with a Mark Twain quote that she attributes to her Aunt Peggy. Even if the whole world is telling you to move, it is your duty to plant yourself like a tree, look them in the eye and say no, you move. This guarantees that Steve and Tony will fight it out. When Zemo shows up as a psychiatrist, she recognizes him through her connections in the Madripoor underworld. Got word from on high. You ain't welcome here. I have no business with a power broker. So she knows that this doctor is about to cause some chaos. So she lets Steve hear the audio feed of Zemo brainwashing Bucky. Why would the task force release this photo to begin with? Get the word out, involve as many eyes as we can. Right. It's a good way to flush a guy out of hiding. Set off a bomb, get your picture taken. You got seven billion people looking for the Winter Soldier. You're saying someone framed him to find him. Hell, she might have even been helping Zemo all along, but as the power broker. So Zemo would not have known who his benefactor was. When Bucky escapes prison, the person who tells Steve where to find him is Sharon Carter. Sub-level five, East Wing. And afterwards, who brings him and Sam their gear? 
Sharon Carter. If Sharon was the power broker at this time, then this makes perfect sense. The power broker is trying to gather as much power as possible. With the Avengers gone, this creates a power vacuum and opportunity. Because in a world without Avengers, she could create her own Avengers. It's not a coincidence that she was in the same bar as Sam, Bucky, and Zemo because she knew they were coming. She's the power broker. She knows shit. She's the one who killed Selby because she was about to give away her identity. Remember, right after, she knew that Selby had been killed. And Selby's dead? And this is also how Madriporian bounty hunters got this text blast so fast. Sharon committed the murder, then framed the boys for it. This gave the boys a reason to trust her. And just so they won't be too suspicious, she poses as a cynical underworld art dealer. Look, you know the whole hero thing is a joke, right? I mean, the way you gave up that shield deep down, you must know it's all hypocrisy. It's also one hell of a coincidence that these bounty hunters found them all at the docks because Sharon hired them and told them they were there. She wanted a ticking clock to give Sam, Bucky, and Zemo as little time with Nagel as possible. Nagel says, I was brought into Hydra's Winter Soldier program to pick up their work. Sharon would have known this because she was in Hydra. I was recruited by the CIA. And who else was in the CIA who could have recruited Nagel? Sharon Carter. But then... Why did she lead these guys to Nagel? Why expose the golden goose to potential harm? Carly Morgenthau and at least seven others have taken the serum. You guys really should steer clear of all of this for your own safety. We know it's a risk, but we're not going to leave until we find the person who cracked the code. We got a name, Wilfred Nagel. Nagel works for the power broker. Well, one theory is this isn't the real Nagel. Could be. But maybe she also wanted Nagel dead. He let the serum fall into the hands of Carly Morgenthau, and this makes him a liability. He also knows too many secrets that could potentially expose Sharon. Now, I'm not sure that Nagel is the only guy who can make the serum. I'm sure they have his computers tapped, they would have notes on his progress. If it's possible for her to replicate the serum, then she's better off without Nagel. She would have known there was a chance that Zemo would kill him, but for good measure, she hires a bounty hunter to fire an RPG at the exact hidden shipping container that held Nagel's lab. Or here's an even simpler solution. Zemo found the gun in the lab, so she wouldn't have seen this coming, so his assassination was never part of her plan. What did you do? So when she says, We've got a big problem. She would be talking about Nagel dying and Zemo trying to destroy super soldiers. I don't think she's talking about Sam here for reasons I'll get into in a second. Maybe she also sent the guys in there to pry information out of Nagel about where to find Carly. But a couple of days ago, she called and asked if I could help someone named Donya Madani. I also think it's likely that Sharon was always funding the Flag Smashers because they cause global chaos. I mean, don't you think it's very impressive that a teenager and a bunch of 20-somethings are able to amass a network this deep and connected in just six months? It's like when TikTok went after Trump rallies, but like, times a million. After all, Sharon does hire Batrock to pretend to work for Carly when his real job was to get close and assassinate her. All through the series, Sharon's using Sam as a patsy, using him to find Carly and recover her serum. You gotta play this out. If Carly disappears, we're not gonna find that serum until it's too late. Then, in the finale, she shows up in New York at great risk to herself. I hear pardons aren't all they're cracked up to be anyway. And she's pretending like she still cares about a pardon. She's like Kaiser Sose. She can't trust anyone else with a job this important, so she has to hide in plain sight and do it herself. Now, I will throw this out there. She's not working alone. We're about to have full access to government secrets, prototype weapons, you name it. Should be something for everyone. So, who is she talking to? Could be the Scrolls. It could be Val. Or maybe even the Mandarin. Or maybe, just maybe, She's talking to the real power broker. Maybe she's the cover. The person who will say she's the power broker to cover for the real villain, <gasps> Arnim Zola in a robot body. Cut off one head, two more shall take its place. And by the way, the show keeps focusing on the painting Woman with a Parasol by Claude Monet. Not a coincidence. This is a painting of Monet's mother and himself. But notice how the woman is standing proud and tall against the wind, just as Sharon has weathered the hardships life has thrown at her. The woman's lit in shadow, showing that she has a dark side, just like Sharon. Her face is obscured by her hair, just as Sharon is not showing her true face. But most importantly, in a bright, impressionist world of color, the woman casts a long shadow. Just as Sharon, living in a world of bright, colorful heroes, is secretly casting a shadow of evil. And actually, our assistant manager Doug here had an Easter egg that he wanted to share. What was that again, Doug? In the show Thundercats, the old cat man put Lionel in charge of the group. Even though he was still mentally a child, he could not even lift the Sword of Omens. Then when they land on Thundara, 
Lionel's pod has malfunctioned and he is suddenly a grown cat man. Is it possible that old cat man broke his pod on purpose so Lionel would grow up fast and lead the Thundercats? Did he steal Lionel's childhood on purpose? Is Lionel Lindsay Lohan in space? I like shows about cats. Let me know if you agree with Doug down in the comments below. But that's just my theory. Let me know what you thought of the twist down in the comments below or at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.